So as everybody knows, lately there has been a ton of talk about cloud music and locker services are a huge part of that conversation. Some exist to clone your music collection and others can be used as basic storage and others let you share files. The latter is where we have the controversy. While there's little doubt that digital lockers can be used unlawfully, uh, many musicians and labels use them every day to collaborate and to uh, efficiently deliver large files to each other. Today, we are pleased to hear, hear from uh, Daniel Raymer, Chief Legal Officer of Swiss secure data logistics provider RapidShare. He will fill us in on their recent manifesto, which calls for all cloud storage providers to do more to protect intellectual property, as well as RapidShare's efforts to work more closely with artists and content owners. To guide us through that conversation is tech reporter extraordinaire, Rob Pegorero. Please join us in welcoming them both. OK, thank you for having me here. Um, as he has already mentioned, I'm with RapidShare, a tech company, and tech and uh, music that raises a, little, a couple of questions. Um, what does RapidShare has has to what does RapidShare has to do with music and the music in the first place? And I would like to um, start my presentation with a little anecdote, an anecdote that turns out to be true, and it's about my mother. And I guess it kind of helps you to understand the significance of uh, the problems we were facing. Um, Fifteen years ago, my mom said, "Hey, Daniel." Um, what do you need a cell phone for? Cell phones are for show-offs, for businessmen, and you're a law student, uh, and being a law student, you're not a businessman, and I hope you're not a show-off, so it's totally useless that you get a cell phone. Ten years ago, uh, she said that uh, she never, she's never going to get a laptop uh, because she was an old-fashioned lady, and she rather wanted to write her letters with her, with her hands than um, getting one of these new things. And uh, five years ago, she thought that I was totally out of my mind, um, because why the hell would anyone want to have a cell phone that allows you to access the internet uh, wherever you are? Um, it was, to her, that was totally useless. And tell you what, today she has a laptop, she has one of these here, an iPad, as a matter of fact, she loves it, and obviously she has a cell phone. So my mom has a pretty bad track record <laughs> when it comes to predicting the importance of technologies. And I guess there is one more thing that she's wrong about. I had a conversation with her a couple of months ago, and she said, okay, you're working for this cloud storage company, and I get it. You can store files <coughs> in the cloud, but I don't really need that. And she's just wrong about that. And five years from now, all of us are going to use cloud services each and every day. We use cloud services for our emails, and I guess a lot of people don't even know that IMAP email services are basically emails in the cloud. And this is going to be true for all of our files. Um, in five years from now, that's my prediction. I'm in the business. We are all going to store our files on cloud services like Microsoft SkyDrive with our Word documents, uh, Apple iCloud, um, and hopefully RapidShare. Um, so the types of services that we deliver have to do a lot uh, with our everyday lives and your, your everyday work especially in five years from now, which is why <coughs> we are very sensitive to outweigh um, the different interests here uh, and not favor one interest, such as privacy over uh, the copyright issues. We don't want to favor completely favor the copyright concerns over the privacy issues, but we really want to outweigh uh, the different uh, interests very carefully, and this is uh, what I'm trying to present here. Um, as a company, we have, as a tech company from Switzerland, we are really interested in intellectual property. We have a lot of intellectual property ourselves. And uh, this is why we have long recognized our responsibility to curb copyright infringement. Um, unlike others in the industry, we go to extraordinary lengths to protect artists' intellectual property. And we constantly look to strengthen and update those services. <coughs> um, RepidShare is probably the first company who has started to um, offer these types of services. And as everyone knows, um, copyright infringers are really early adapters. They have been the, the first ones to use um, the tape recorder 30 years ago for 
um, copyright infringement 20 years ago. They were the first ones to uh, purchase CD burners. Um, today, both CD burners and tapes are completely legitimate um, devices, but back then, in the first years, um, the technologies had kind of a bad reputation. RapidShare was the first company to um, in introduce um, cloud storage uh, on a large scale basis to the public. And obviously, since we offered these services so early, uh, we had some problems with pirates um, going to the RapidShare system to abuse our system for their purposes. Uh, okay, so what do we do? Um, First of all, one third of our company, of, of the staff, is devoted to rooting out suspected copyright violators. Why do we need so many people? Um, a third of the company is quite a lot. The problem is to distinguish the good guys from the bad guys. We, if we had 20 people just clicking the delete button, that would be a lot, <laughs> and it would mean that we uh, have to, to, well, you could probably delete all the files that we have if uh, 20 people wouldn't do anything uh, other than that, but the real job is to find out who the bad guys are, to investigate those cases, to go on the internet, to go on the bad where sites where copyright violation occurs, and to figure out how our service is being used and who the abusers are. Um, we have some technologies to, to, su uh, to support that job, but Still, there's a lot of human labor involved in, in doing that. Um, suspected repeat offenders are, of course, kicked out of the system. They get their accounts terminated, all the files deleted, which is heavily effective because a lot of guys have thousands of files that they have transferred over time. Uh, and if we delete those files, these guys usually aren't very happy and uh, just go somewhere else and maybe write a couple back bad black po blog posts about rapid share or uh, tell other pirates on the internet how bad we are and tell you what we're pretty happy about these types of comments. Um, we have pretty close um, ties to, to the movie studios um, that constantly deliver us with titles of upcoming movies uh, so that we can be vigilant uh, before movies actually coming out. Uh, and trying to do our part in uh, deleting pre-released versions of uh, upcoming movies. <coughs> and last but not least, we've developed a new crawling technology that is constantly reading the internet and uh, shady websites trying to figure out uh, information about um, files that have been uh, published without the copyright owner's permission. Um, and this crawling technology is really helpful. That's I think one of the key um, key strategies to address that uh, problem in the long run. Uh, this Our crawler has a front end, uh, a user face that enables us to search for a particular phrase. So um, if there is a brand new album coming out, uh, then we can go on our crawler, enter the name of that album, and the crawler is going to give us everything that it has uh, with that name in it, be it the file name or be it a website where this particular phrase is uh, being mentioned uh, in the connection with a rapid share download link. Um, the front end allows us to create Excel spreadsheets with links that were found on the internet on third party websites, and we can also set like an alarm system where we automatically receive emails with uh, information whenever the crawler finds uh, a particular phrase or title on the internet. Um. Well, the back end, that's the real magic behind it. Uh, the crawler uh, constantly reads, saves, and indexes numerous sites. It's a little bit like the Google crawler. It bypasses a lot of countermeasures uh, because obviously the operators of these shady websites try to keep us out. And they do that with a bunch of uh, sophisticated technologies that um, I really don't want to talk too much about here because probably you guys aren't really the right um, guys who are interested in, 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 in that type of technical stuff. But um, they have some pretty smart technologies to try to keep crawlers out. And uh, I guess our guys are just a little bit smarter than they are uh, and are able to bypass a lot of their countermeasures. Finally, uh, the, the new um, thing seems to be that they don't even publish download links anymore. 
um, but container files that have rapid share download links in them, but the container files are encrypted, so you don't really get to see the download link anymore. You just download a little piece of software that is then downloading things off rapid share, and uh, we have developed software to read and extract the links that aren't visible to the human eye. Um, the second part of what the, our technology is doing, it's constantly reading third-party websites uh, and uh, tries to figure out what the content is. Um, and that's kind of a complicated job. It's more complicated with music than uh, with uh, movies. And I'll give you an example. I've just been on the internet and I've checked for the iTunes music charts. Um, in the top 10 charts are songs with titles such as Diamonds, Die Young, Hey Ho, I Cry, Home, Some Nights, Little Things. These are terms where it is extremely tough for a machine to figure out that there is a connection between such gener generous general terms and music. We can't really delete a file just because there was the word diamonds on a website in connection with a rapid share downloading. It could be anything with diamonds. So it, the, the machine doesn't really know that it's a song from Rihanna um, just because the word diamond uh, pops up somewhere uh, in the descriptive text on, on a website. So um, the matching uh, algorithm is really smart. It tries to identify um, a lot of links. Um, but still, the human labor is required to figure out the good, the bad files from the good ones, because we can't really delete legitimate files accidentally. Um, so there's a new strategy, and we believe that this is the next big thing to um, scare the pirates away. We're uh, going to introduce a daily traffic limit. Every user who's registered with RapidShare um, can access his files as much as he wants to. He can uh, give third parties access to his files, but there is a daily traffic limit for that, and that traffic limit is one gigabyte per day for free users and 30 gigabytes per day for uh, paying subscribers. Um, this is still more than enough for everyone with legitimate purposes, but the professional of pirate who's uploading a bunch of albums doesn't really want to live with uh, and go with a service that just allows for 10 downloads of, of an album uh, per day um, because usually the, these sites have a lot of traffic. They want to deliver their, their illegal files to um, a broad audience and not just to 10 people and not even to 300 people. They want to give the pirated content to thousands of people in a short period of time, which is why RapidShare um, should be pretty... Um, um, should not be a good choice for these pirates in, in two weeks from now when we're going to implement uh, those limitations. Um, yeah, that's a quote from our CEO. Because of our new limit on outbound public traffic that any storage account can generate, there is no longer a need to, uh, to limit download speed to deter infringement. This actually makes our service more interesting to the uh, normal user. You can access your files as fast as you want to. and uh, you just ha have to live with certain limitations that other people other than yourself uh, can't access a lot of your content uh, during one day. Okay, that's, um, that's it from now, uh, for now. Thank you for your attention, and do you have any questions? Well, I'll start. So, uh, So the big question I have, you, you've repeatedly changed your system, you've added various limits and restrictions and rules. Are you ever going to see the end of this to such that your service is no longer a target? And basically, is it even possible to run a cloud service with public access to shared files that doesn't get taken over for this kind of copyright infringement on a massive and apparently very, very creative scale? Um, well, I... I think we we constantly want to strive to make our service better in different ways. Um, we want to make a better user experience, and we constantly want to get better when it comes to uh, driving pirates away. Um, is it possible to ever have no pirate at all on our system? I don't know. Or but a we're, different it's, way. It's our, at what it's point our target. Do you, do you consider your job done in terms of we've gotten this down to the the minimum? We've done the best we can do. 
I think it's never done, and I'm really happy that I'm never going to be unemployed. <laughs> um, <laughs> but um, yeah, it's it's a constant learning curve. But that goes for for everyone. Uh, and and if we want to excel at what we're doing, we'll probably have to live with pirates always trying to come back. If we throw them out, chances are that we still need people like me, and we still need good ideas to make sure that they don't come back. So I, I was at uh, last night's uh, opening event. If, if you all didn't go, you missed some very good music up at the Dunes in Columbia Heights. Uh, and I mentioned that uh, I've got this panel coming up, and then there were a couple of people who raised their eyebrows like, really? So I know you all want to sort of become a, a way for artists to trade, you know, master tracks and their full uh, quality online. Do you worry that your name might be kind of damaged goods to them, given the, the sort of history built up? Well, we have artists using our service, I, I don't know who was raising his, eye, his or her eyebrows, some, and some it, you, you don't have to I tell me. Some of you also at dinner, so you can raise your, you can ask the question yourself. Okay. You like. um, does anyone want to raise his eyebrows? I, I don't know, so <laughs> thank you. <laughs> you, you. You can raise your hand if you prefer. It's easier for me to see from up here. <laughs> okay. now, now, I'm, I'm not concerned that um, our brand may have a bad reputation or something. I know that a lot of artists use rapid share. I get really positive remarks from, from artists uh, on a regular basis. So if everyone, if, if there's anyone who, who thinks that we're not trying hard enough, uh, feel free to shoot me an email and we can have a discussion about that. But um, I haven't heard anything like that. Are there any judicial or legal developments that have you worried? You know, SOPA or PIP obviously would have uh, rolled a bowling ball through your business model along with many other companies. What's on your uh, I, worry I list? I wouldn't say that SOPA and PIPA would have um, undermined our, our business model because we don't see ourselves as, uh, shady, as a shady website. Uh, but still, I, I think it was bad law. And I'm on a personal level, I'm happy that uh, it didn't come in place. But um, I'm not here to talk about SOPA and PIPA. Um, I have, the legal concern that I have is that it's really hard to um, operate a global service with um, the certainty that you're complying with law in every country. Um, I really don't know if we comply with Iranian law. I don't know. Maybe I would get my hand cut off when I go to, to Iran because they find something on rapid share that they don't like. I, I really don't know. Um, we're active in a lot of countries and laws are different and the one thing that I would like to see is like a minimum standard where everyone in the world agrees that if you comply with that standard um, you're fine but chances are that we're not going to see that in the very near future okay do we have any questions okay there I have one specific question. Um, it just seems to me, I was a little confused with your model. You had something about like one gigabyte a day and you had this one uh, particular um, part where you were talking about the users and it just seems to me that um, one person is able to create uh, many different usernames from one specific, um, <clears throat> excuse me, one specific username for a different different uh, profile, so Matt Holbert or Delonte Smith or whatever can create, um, you know, D Smith two or Matt Holbert five or something like that. And it seems that uh, one person can share just a lot of different music from that. Is there a way that you're monitoring that as well, uh, in terms of um, just constant sharing? Yeah, the, the thing is that we haven't introduced that. This um, mm -hmm. what what I've shown to you is just part of a press announcement that went out last week and uh, this system is gonna go online in uh, in about two weeks from now so we don't really know what uh, the the guys that we want to scare away are gonna do we have some assumptions of what of what might happen of some things that they may uh, do in order to uh, s um, still stay on the rapid share system um, but since it's uh, this is still a speculation we're prepared uh, and whatever countermeasures they're trying to take. Uh, we have some ideas in place to uh, to counter that, but I really don't want to talk too much about that because there is uh, a live stream here, and uh, I don't really want to explain people uh, what we do so they could prepare for that. But 
if it's registering multiple accounts, I can assure you that we're going to um, keep an eye on that. Uh, and there are a bunch of different tec technical approaches to figuring out if one individual has res registered numerous accounts in a short time. We had another raised hand or eyebrow on the right. Yeah. Uh, yes. Uh, hi. I'm. This is on. Yes. Um, I'm uh, Bill Rosenblatt from Copyright and Technology. Um, it's very impressive, all this technology that you're implementing. My question is, um, what is your motivation for, for doing this? Is, it, is there a, an economic motivation for implementing all these um, measures to, cu to curb copyright abuse? Or is it fear of being sued by copyright owners like movie studios? Or, is it, or what, what is... And I'm sorry if I seem cynical. I, I'm, it's very impressive. No, it's uh, what, what is the motivation? It's There's not, no it's cynicism in music. It's, it's, not, it's not cynical. It's, it's a legitimate question. And um, maybe people start to believe me now when I say that pirates are really bad customers. It's, we never wanted bad, them. Bad how? From a financial perspective. Pirates create a lot of traffic. Traffic is expensive, and you don't really get any money from them. Because believe it or not, a pirate that doesn't want to spend 99 songs for a song on iTunes uh, is not going to purchase a rapid share account for $4.99. Um, sure, I've made that argument over and over the years again. And in the first years, um, I was getting uh, a lot of eyebrows, uh, raised eyebrows. Uh, and people said, hey, they may not want to buy a rapid share song for instead of paying 99 songs for uh, cents for one song. But if they download a lot, it makes sense uh, on an economic standpoint. And they're right. Sure, some pirates are going to register for a rep rapid share account because they want to download a lot. Right now, it doesn't make sense anymore because downloads are, uh, there is no s difference in, in the download speeds. Um, but um, in general, pirates don't want, just don't want to spend money, period. And they don't, if, if they see any way they can cheat rapid share, they're going to cheat rapid share. They're going to buy some download tools that allow them to, uh, to download for free. Uh, as much as they, as they want to. So it's not an interesting customer base. The interesting customer base that we want to have are the end consumers, the guys like my mom who say, hey, I want to have a provider that I stay with for years. I, I sign up with, I pay $4.99 a month uh, for it, and I don't even complain about it because these $4.99 are well spent. They um, store my files. Uh, but these types of customers that we want to have don't really like to be mixed up with and, and thrown into a bottle uh, with, with a bunch of pirates. They don't like uh, accidental deletions of their personal files. They give us money to store their files and, not to, and to not accidentally delete it. So we really don't want to have piracy on our system, but the good, reliable customer that stays with us for, for years. Thank you. All right, I see we've got the uh, Time's Up sign here. Okay. So you, you all can Thank harangue you. both of us uh, offline later on. Yeah. All right. Thank, Thank you. you. <laughs> yeah, it's a little.